Hi everyone, it's Beth, and today I want to talk about the battle for the number two position on coin market cap between Ethereum and XRP, and what I think that means. So, if that's something you're interested in, stay right there. Okay, so if you have been paying attention here in the cryptoverse in the past week or so, you have noticed that there has been an attempted flipping between XRP and Ethereum. So far, Ethereum has been able to fight off XRP each time it does take the lead in the uh, battle for number two, but it is very close indeed. So I did want to take a look at what I think is you know, going on, what has been causing the huge price increase uh, from of XRP and uh, what I think uh, is in store for Ethereum. So um, first of all, look at these prices. Oh my goodness, this is so close. So we're looking at uh, the total market capitalization for Ethereum at $23.86 billion. And for XRP, it is 23.78 billion dollars so these are very very close um and right now we have uh ethereum so what's going on with ripple that's basically the big question because it has been huge pumping uh in the last week or so and uh right now we have swell which is the annual conference for ripple it starts tomorrow as well as there have been some X rapid uh, announcements that that is coming out soon. Although I got to tell you that as I'm looking into X rapid and trying to figure out what exactly is going on over at Ripple Labs, um, you know, their website really is only talking about Ripple Net at this point. And, you know, there are lots of banks that have signed on to Ripple Net. There are um, lots, there seems to be a lot of innovation that they that they have. You got to give Ripple credit, you know, they have, they, they really want to allow for banks to have quick, cheap, international uh, settlements. And, you know, that is definitely a, a huge change in what we have in traditional banking situation. So um, that is certainly a big change. I, I think that there, you know, you can't really be on that. I don't think that you can really be on friends with Ripple. Uh, you either kind of love what they're doing and see that they are, in fact, going to be changing the banking economy, which, you know, I, I think that that's true. But I, I don't know that I really think that trying to uh, you know, in gather into the folds, all these big banks into cryptocurrency is really what I had in mind when I was, you know, researching blockchain and cryptocurrency for myself. So, um, but in any case, this is what they're doing. And it does seem that they are making some big strides with making some really big changes in what banks are able to do as far as you know, talking to each other. So um, that's, I, I, that is interesting. It, I'm not going to lie. That's totally interesting. Okay. Anyway, so Ethereum, if you look, there's just a ton of articles out right now about the battle for second place. I liked this one over on uh, livebitcoinnews.com. Uh, and it does, you know, talk about Ethereum. I mean, Ethereum has had its woes, and we can certainly, I think, blame them in large part on all of the ICOs that happened in 2017 that have kind of failed to produce and either needed to sell some, some of their Ethereum, which of course they raised during their funding stage in order to continue paying the bills, or maybe they just needed to sell some Ethereum because expensive lifestyles are expensive. <laughs> so, um, you know, whether the projects are continuing or not, there has been a lot of ETH dumped on the market. Now, hopefully, we have kind of seen the end coming to that. I think that really happened over the summer. So 
Um, Ethereum has bounced off of its bottom price, which um, was a little under $200 and has come back up to around $230 right now, which is still a huge drop from its all time high and from its kind of relationship that it had been holding pretty steady with Bitcoin. So I certainly hope to see that the price for Ethereum will find a nice rebound. And um, I think that there's a fair amount of you know, good indicators out there for that to be the case. So uh, just to go over uh, briefly what is happening with Ripple is um, Ripple Net. Again, things are, so I'm not sure if this really is part of X Rapid, this multi-hop payment, or if that's just part of RippleNet and what exactly RippleNet encompasses. But in any case, there are a lot of banks that are part of RippleNet and the first bank to test the multi-hop payments is the Siam Commercial Bank. And the idea here is that banks will not have to have a relationship between the originator and the beneficiary institutions directly because they'll be able to um, use an intermediary, which in, th in this test is the Siam Commercial Bank. So that's that's the idea here. Um, the, the announcement by Ripple says, using multi-hop SCB, the Siam Commercial Bank, will be able to receive and forward on a payment without a bilateral relationship between the originator and the beneficiary institutions which is a big change in traditional banking where these banks did, you know, they could only send money to banks that they had that trust relationship with because that's what the old guard system is based on is totally trust. So um, this will allow for, um, the, for an intermediary to serve there. And I, I don't know that they have to use XRP, this is where it gets a little bit, um, I don't think that they have to use XRP in order to do this multi-hop. I think that that will make it less expensive as far as fees are concerned if banks do use XRP as the asset that is being sent around. Um, but I don't think that that's, that that's necessary for them to use this. But in any case, I think that this is what the, you know, the big news has been with XRP recently, of course, in conjunction with Swell, that's the conference which starts tomorrow. And I mean, there's some big names over here. Um, the Siam Commercial Bank is going to be speaking over there. Uh, former President Bill Clinton is the keynote speaker. So um, we will certainly be seeing information come out from Swell. It will not be done via live stream this year. However, they are going to be um, releasing information the day of the conference and they will be releasing videos as well, but it will not be a live stream. So this may very well be a lot like we saw with consensus earlier in the year where people really expected uh, some big news to come out of consensus. There was, you know, really expected that the big kickoff of a bull run and, you know, it wasn't. So this kind of might be a, an instance of by the rumor, sell the news, but only time will tell. So in any case, for Ethereum, um, I think that there's just some really, there's some exciting things happening out here. So first of all, I wanted to highlight this price prediction from Tom Lee, who is uh, the face of Fundstrat, uh, uh, which is, you know, an investment thing. Um, but in any case, uh, so Tom Lee, who's definitely a cryptocurrency permable, um, he predicts that Ethereum will reach $1,900 before the end of the year. And he is basing this on really a lot more um, technical analysis and saying that Ethereum has dropped two standard deviations in comparison to its other top 10 coins. And that's just, that's a lot. And it needs to have a bounce from here. It, you know, the, te the technical analysis expects a bounce from here. Um, additionally, I was reading a different article that said that around $140 is the, uh, what it costs to mine an Ethereum. And so, you know, if we come all the way down to that level, then certainly I think we would expect to see quite a bounce from there. So hopefully it will in fact be all the way up to $1,900, which of course would be higher than the all time highs for Ethereum, which were previously right around $1,400. Um, but even more exciting is that 
there's an article over here on nullstx.com that, and the headline here is Ethereum scaling nightmares may be over, may be over sooner than you think. So um, this is one that I had not heard of before. We've heard of um, Casper, Plasma, sharding, uh, you know, ZK snarks. There's a lot of things that have been talked about as far as how to scale Ethereum, but they all require big changes to the code. This one, however, is a layer two solution and um, it's called OpenST Mosaic. So it's something that has been really hush hush, but it was talked about at um, the, the hackathon at ETH Berlin. So it is, like I said, it's a layer two solution here. So it lives on chain and I'm gonna read this so I don't mess it up. So it lives on chain as a, as a layer two solution and lets tokens move over to an auxiliary system. Here, the majority of the heavy computational activity can be carried out before the tokens sync back to the Ethereum mainnet or live blockchain. So it like will allow for a lot of, um, you know, just a, a layer two where, where most of the information can be done. And this says that it will allow, this protocol allows for tens of thousands of transactions per second. And it's going to be available from quarter one of 2019, which is, almost immediately and we're in we're entering quarter four of 2018 at this point so that is very very soon um which is really exciting so i am super excited to you know see some technical analysis that really points towards uh, a nice rebound for ethereum as well as some you know fundamental changes for ethereum that really bode well for its future and its you know ability to be competitive with these other blockchains. I mean, XRP is saying that they, because they have a couple other um, protocols that they are, are using also. So not uh, just on chain for XRP either, but they're talking about uh, being able to process 50,000 transactions per second, which is huge. So um, it's really, really uh, encouraging, I think, to see that Ethereum is finding ways to remain competitive and hopefully will hold on to that second spot um, convincingly. So I'm taking this fight, quite frankly, I'm taking it as, as a buy signal for Ethereum. But again, I am not a financial advisor. I am just a person. So that is what I think. And um, that's, that's what I am taking from the situation. So please, Definitely let me know what you think. If anyone can explain Ripple to me even um, a little more clearly, that would be lovely. Um, and yeah, there we go. I'm going to leave it there for today. So if you like the video, then please do leave a like. And if you'd like to see more from me, then please do subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, and please leave some comments about what you think, uh, what you think is going to resolve in this battle for the number two position on CoinMarketCap. I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. So, all right, thank you very much for your time, everyone. I will see you next time.